What's up, Banana Bunch? First podcast of the new year. New year, new we. I guess that's the title of this episode now that I've just said that out loud. Well, we've got a fun one for you today. I'm bringing in a little international voice here, courtesy of one of our Nepali employees, Sarah, uh, who's going to tell us some about her customs, cultures, and some of the interesting things she found when she moved to the United States. And then in the interest of the new year, new we, and I'm saying that just, you know, I don't want to put it solely on me. I want us all to grow and be better in this year. I actually brought in a personal trainer and a dentist to give us some fun health and hygiene tips and all kinds of stuff that we could definitely use to bring into the new year. But you know what time it is. Before we dive into the actual show, I got to ask you for some reviews. So it's January now. I didn't quite hit my goal of 100 reviews by the end of December, but I do appreciate everyone that did that. But this is the part of the show where I always go, hey, everyone. If you've got some time and you love what you're hearing here, go ahead and leave us a review on Apple Podcasts and now on Spotify. Reviews and downloads, those are the things that keep us successful, okay? Because I want to constantly be charting. You know, we've been pretty lucky to keep hovering in the top 100 food podcasts on Apple Podcasts. I'm really proud of that. And you all should be proud of that too. And you should be proud of me. Your reviews can help us out hugely there. I'm very appreciative of it. You know, it just takes a few seconds. I know last week I read a little clip from a recent review. I think that's a fun thing to do, right? And you know what? If you want, if you're not feeling doing a full on review and you're just like, you know what, Mark, maybe I just want to leave a little direct uh, feedback to you. Well, go ahead and shoot me an email podcast at junglegyms.com. Or you can actually call in, I have a little hotline here country code one. 513-674-6855. You can call, you can leave me a little voicemail. I don't answer that line, so you don't have to, you, you can get over that anxiety of uh, actually having to speak to me directly. I just check it after the fact. And if you're cool with it, maybe we'll air it on the show. Could be a lot of fun, right? Well, let, let's not uh, let's not bury the lead here, okay? We're going to go ahead and dive right in. So a few months back, I found out that we were expanding our Nepal section in the store. And one of the cool things about Jungle Gyms, and I don't know if this gets talked about enough on the show, but I'll, I'll try to do more of that. But we speak something like 35 languages in the store. I don't know if we speak them to each other. I speak one and a half languages. And uh, I, I find it, I, honestly, I think it's one of the coolest things about us. There's so much international culture and flavor here. And I think that's what's made the store so popular and why we have so many cool products and all this fun stuff and what we really pride ourselves on doing and I'm I'm saying that at least I feel like what that's accurate to say but we often hire people from those places to source the items that we carry there so you know instead of having someone like me for example go okay well uh, what's the greatest hits of uh, Indian food yeah I could probably pick a couple correct things but not as correct as somebody who was like actually living there you know what I mean so I got connected with, with Sarah, who'd worked here, uh, and she got moved to work in our international team and was headed back home to Nepal recently. Now, she's since come back. I like to do a lot of my interviews in advance. But she's since come back and had some really cool stories to share as far as uh, the differences in the culture here in the U.S. versus what she experienced back home and some of those like... You know, I was just curious to see what are the things that you experience here that you weren't necessarily prepared for and all that good stuff. So, I, you know what? I'm going to stop rambling. There's no point in the rambling. You just want to hear what she has to say. So enjoy. Joining me in the WJJI studio today is Jim from International as well as Sarah from International, who is now... Well, there's a whole story here, Jim. Actually, why don't you set this up a little bit for me So, since you understand the hierarchy of your department better than I do. Well, Sarah is now helping us buy the products from Nepal, and she's actually the category buyer. But there's some background here i got to cover with Please. you. Please. We started noticing a huge influx of Nepal customers to the market, and I didn't carry a lot of the stuff they were looking for. So in my infinite wisdom, I went out there and tried to find all the stuff that I thought these people could use, and I bought all kinds of stuff. Little did I know, and after Sarah got in here, she told me that they were just selling me all the junk they couldn't sell anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I mean, I had this section out there that was just nobody was buying it. I I had like twelve foot of pickle trays, remember, and then glass pickles. And I'm like, I don't know, they, they must eat a lot of pickles in Nepal. <laughs> anyway, so there's literally, and as we'll discuss, thousands of people coming into this market from Nepal, and they kind of did it without us knowing they were coming. They're not showing up in the census data or anything. So, but. Uh, when we hired Sarah for produce at some point, 
I talked her into helping me and to try to put the right items in for Nepal. And lo and behold, it's just taken off like crazy. Went from, I think I had an eight foot section to, she's got like 48 foot out there and it's smoking. It's flying out of there. Congratulations. Pretty much, pretty much everything I had in here, we had to delete and discontinue. But uh, she's got the right mix in for that customer base and they are flying in here like crazy now. I should note one of the reasons I knew we had a market is there was at that time like eight little Nepal stores opened up around us. Pretty good sign that we were blowing it. Right. So once we realized that we didn't carry the right mix, uh, we tried and then we found Sarah who has really taken it and run with it. So Sarah is category manager over the Nepal foods. I've also asked her to take Sri Lanka, which is another one that I was screwing up pretty good. And (laughs) she has found (laughs) multiple vendors and is getting the right mix in that market too. So I think this is these kinds of stories are my favorite thing about Jungle Gym so far. Like the idea that we would take, look, I can't think of too many businesses that would go, hey, you're from the place that we're trying to purchase right. for. Well, why don't you come run this for me? That's right. such an amazing story. Well, Sarah, thank you for joining me. I appreciate you taking time to do this. Thank you. Thank you for you guys invite for me over here. I'm really happy. Yes, I'm, I'm happy to have you. All right. So my, I have a few questions for you. Yes. I'll try to keep these easy as possible. Okay. But I don't know the answer, so you could really say whatever you'd like. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm, I give you my that, best. That's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> so first off, where is Nepal? Uh, Nepal is uh, India and China. Right in between. Between. Oh, okay. Perfect. What would you say that uh, Nepal is most famous for? Uh, Mount Everest is really famous. And second one is the Buddha. Oh, and I hadn't realized that. Realized that, but Buddhism was founded in Nepal. I had yes. no idea. He's really? born in Nepal. I had no idea. That's amazing. Yeah. Are there a lot of people from Nepal in the United States? Oh yes, a lot of them. I think is this here Ohio, Fairfield, mm-hmm. and Cincinnati. It's forty thousand people who are living over here. Really, that's a very large body. I did not expect that number. That's incredible. We have a lot of them because uh, you guys know, you do not know how, how many people we are live, but our function, sometimes people died. We are counting the number, how many people, and we are, I see over there a lot oh, of okay. people. Wild. Yeah, I had no idea. And when you look, when you try to look it up in the census data and stuff, those numbers are nowhere near. They're, they showed nobody in Cincinnati, of which course. we know. Uh, the last thing I read in Google was they were estimating that there was 200,000 from Nepal in the country. I think that's really low. Oh, that can't be right. Yeah. How long have you been in the United States? Two more years. Okay. What was something you found difficult to adjust to when you moved here? Um, over here, United States is a very beautiful country. Very developed country, everything facility, mm-hmm. but I did not like it over here. There is a respect for the senior people. Mm-hmm. They're looking for the equal. Yeah. But my country is the if you anything is senior, we, we cannot look the position. We are looking for the age, and we are respect for the senior people always. I love that. Like and yeah. And we are do the relation. Anybody senior, we are say dad, mom. We are try treat this way, but over here, the if you anybody working the sixty five years old guy, and this the position is small, they say they treat for different way. Right, that's the very difficult. Interesting. And then over here is some neighborhood. Some people died, and other neighborhood they doesn't know anything. Who died? Who born? One neighborhood is died. Other neighborhood is celibate. Right. Our is not the if you neighborhood have problem another neighborhood we are go over there they helping they try to problem you know right over here is selfish you know they yeah. don't know each other which neighborhood living other house we do not know about that that's so interesting too the idea of that you know and in the U.S. I feel like we are constantly connected with each other but. You make a great point that we're not 
really deeply connecting because you're right. I don't know anything that's going on in my yeah, neighborhood and, right now. Yeah, you know, neighborhood is what time they come job, how many people living, and which country. We did not know about that. The Our country is the, if you, five minute, 10 minute walk, we know is a 10 minute walk is a neighborhood. Oh, that many people live, they have a family, they're working. We know in the five minute, 20 minute far neighborhood. But over here is a next door is we do not know about that. I bar- you're right. I I barely know my neighbors at all. That's so, f- and it's not funny. But I'm, how do I say it? And it's funny without it actually being comedic. But it is. It's disappointing for me to realize that because you made two great points about a the respect for elders, right? And uh, in addition to the idea that. Yes, we're so close to each other, and yet, I again, I could barely tell you anything about my neighbors or the next town over. I, I wouldn't be able to. That's so. That's really interesting. And then some people is hungry over here. They're thinking that they don't give the food. Our country is. This is my plate. If you are, I try to, and somebody coming hungry, we are give for the this plate for the next person because they're hungry too, right? Right. But over here, they doesn't give the spend anything. Yeah, it's a lot of ho- hoarding it yeah. to ourselves. I understand, and and I'm a culprit of that as well. I've definitely done it. I'm so sorry for if you I no try no. to tell both of them, but that's I see over I here. I ap- I truly appreciate they your never honesty. Give the, if you thirsty, say I need thirsty. I need water. They never give one water too. Right. My country is no. If you're hungry, you go my country. They feed you. They give you the room, bedroom. They give the couple day for, you know, free service. And then if you have sick, you have a cloth, you did not have it. We are try to give over here. I love it. Nobody give anything. If you have money, everything. You did not have money, nothing over here. It's so interesting to think about, and it's I love hearing it from someone like you who's seeing it firsthand, you know, and we, I think Americans take it all for granted. We just accept it. That's just how it is, right? I have my dinner and I'm sorry you don't, but yes. I'm only having mine. Whereas I, I think that that thought even, process would be great. Yeah, even is the, you know, is the kids growing 18 years cross and parents say it's 18 years you cross, that's not my responsibility. Parents say for the kids, but my culture is the, if you, kids growing, doesn't matter 18, 20, 30, is that they live together, and then main point is my culture is the kids growing, they're looking for mom and dad. They're going for mom and dad listening. And then our culture main point is the if we are growing, how much the parents treat for us, how do we are growing. And then parents go old, we are treat same for refund for the parents because the parents born for us and then uh, we are growing. That's the, our responsibility. We are looking for the parents. That's why we are never give for the parents retirement house. Mm-hmm. We are looking. And then over here, the parents a little bit problem, health problem, health issue. They, re, they send for retirement house. Right. They need to family, you know. They need expect for the enjoy the family. But they never have time. They never give for the time for the parents. And parents have only job is baby born 18 years. That's it. Parents job. Right. Not that's right very parents interesting expect for us too right we are give refund they old we are carry home hand change the driver that's our responsibility they change our driver right right more now my, our turn is we are change the driver parents right but over here is selfish you know they don't treat for parents is the good way oh parents that's it right <laughs> I'm sorry to laugh, but no, you're I'm but sorry for the no, jail. no apologies at all. That's great. A lot of parents, I see the cry over here, and that's why I say, everybody, my helper, everybody, I say, older people is always parents, respect. Yeah, absolutely. Respect. You can learn so much from them. I think Americans, in some regards, have lost sight of the idea and what is important about family. I think uh, there's an expression to wash your hands of something, meaning yeah. that I, we're, we're quick to just say, that's not my problem. Yes. Oh, that's a beautiful take. I'm really glad we got to talk a little bit today. Well, on the food side, 
this should hopefully be more exciting. What what kind of foods do you like to like? What would be some traditional Nepalese dishes? Uh, my t- uh, Nepali traditional food is a lot of them, but the main traditional is gundruk and then dido. This make how to make means uh, you know uh, buckwheat flour. Okay. Buckwheat flour making the hot water and we are mix up. That's uh, coming one kind of thick. This okay. is. And gundruk means green mustard. Green mustard, we are making the pickle for the small jar. 15 days after they coming the sour mm. and making the pickle. Mm, that this sounds kind good. The really, that's the traditional, but we are making the cell roti. Lot of them. I feed for a lot of time for gym and jungle <laughs> like my food too. Oh, good. <laughs> I give her. She cooks for us and brings stuff. That's in so room. fun. Yeah. Uh, it, well, Jim, uh, has there been anything that you've particularly enjoyed that you've gotten to try? I like the rice dishes, and I'm not sure what all's in them. I sometimes don't ask, but, <laughs> but I, 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 she, she tends to make either rice dishes or a, like a noodle dish. Noodles. And so they're both excellent. But the I, I like the rice. I call it chicken and rice. I'm not sure what all's really in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's see, that's the best part of your job, Jim, yeah. is that you get to try all the fun food. Yeah. So I'm going to start making the, you all try it in here. There you go. Well, I think that was actually the majority of my questions, to be honest with you. I, do, I wanted to cover the cultural differences, which I think you did a great job of. I did not know about that. <laughs> no, that's but that's I, I mean, realistically, those are the sorts of things that I want to uncover on the show is how, how do you view family versus how do we view family? What's important culturally, that sort of thing. And I think you did a great job of speaking to those. I do not know, but I try my best. Well, I, I appreciate that too. Tell me about your snack mixes. Oh. I, oh. And I know that there's commodities that do real well, like the beans and stuff, but the snack mixes are, are Flying and they're phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like is the uh, we are eat the snack is uh, sometime we do not have time to snack. My mm-hmm. section have the lot of snack over there. I think I bring for the produce. You're supposed to us some. I right? forgot. <laughs> I already bring the produce I call section. Nap- Napoleon uh, check mix is what I call. Yeah, them. I'm into that. Like. I uh, I think snack is really good. People like it. American people like it too. A lot of people they buy from my section. I see a lot of time. Easy too and tasty too. Oh yeah. Different different taste. Sweet. Yeah. Some of them spicy. Oh, spicy. Okay, that's what I was excited for. Ooh. Um. This maybe is a dumb question. It shouldn't be a dumb question, but I haven't memorized the store yet. Mm-hmm. Where exactly could we find the the Nepal section in the store? Um, the close to India, okay. the India section is aisle orange, 14. Orange 14. Corner, orange, yeah, 14. orange 14. Is the, this one is a bit for very small sections, Jim already tell you. We actually cut right into the main hallway and just dropped shelving in there because we didn't have any room. And, and that little section is outperforming a large amount of our different sections. But I love it, though. Almost, I think, eight foot. And then Jim, it was a, it was eight foot, yeah. Eight foot, and that's the really good story too. <laughs> I did a, he and me working over here almost two years before. I never see him. <laughs> it was eight foot of pickle trays. Yeah, pickle tray. <laughs> and then I didn't I, know why, but I had eight foot of pickle trays over there. I never every see every size pickle tray you can imagine. <laughs> it was. And then two years I never see, and then jungle is. Talk to me a little bit, and Jungle called me one day upstairs, and he and Jungle the same table upstairs, and I said, "This is my last day. I think I'm go home. Maybe, maybe they are fire me." <laughs> 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 I thinking my fire day today. Right. <laughs> <laughs> my leg is going this way, Aww. and my face is go everything. <laughs> and then Jungle say, "I give you opportunity for you Nepal section. You understand?" I say, I'm not understand anything. I understand Nepali, but I'm not understanding English how to do. And Jungle is God. He gave me a good opportunity for me. You know, I did not have dad, but I give my dad place for Jungle. Jungle is really great. If you are stand up this place, Jungle and Jim Beckett, AJ is, you know, I'm stand up. That's why. Absolutely. I think it's great that, Jungle, you said it so well. I mean, he gives, he finds people with skills and knowledge and gives them an opportunity to 
They basically run you know, their own business. Right. Yeah, no, uh, you're performing not, on a grand he, scale. One one side, if you, we are looking for the his run on the business, but one side he give opportunity for the same for my my you know, a lot of people is not understand same me. I'm not understanding English before. I'm not understand. I know is I have a business in Nepal. I know how to business run, but I did not understand United States business running. Okay. And then he gave opportunity for me this one. And then Jim Becker is really great. The he doesn't uh, thinking is uh, she's not understand notice nothing. He give small small knowledge too. That's why I'm come this place too. If he doesn't he doesn't teach me that much, I never come this year right now. Sure. That's credit for the gym back here too. He teach me that much, Aww. you know. He's blushing a little bit. <laughs> money out of me. <laughs> no, you know. Right. Uh, the, <laughs> oh my God, no. I didn't need money. You got it. You the, got it. Uh, everybody oh, don't keep going. I'll have <laughs> the different story. I lose my dad 48 years. He's old. Mm -hmm. The earthquake 2015, April 25th. No, April 25th is my dad passed away. The earthquake. He's sleeping and he's yeah. Home crash so and died, wow. and then uh, I thinking is over here is the United States come to work, go home only eight hours. My life is damaged. I thinking my life life is totally damaged. I'm not understanding English anything over here, mm -hmm. and I try to open my own business, and I did not know how to open. I looking for opportunity, but jungle gave me, and I really excited. And I thinking is jungle gave me, but any any way somebody fire me. The, I cannot understand how to order, how to the talk to vendor, the sure. knowledge, and then I request for Zim Bucket, and Zim Bucket very small, small. You know the if you I have a God, if you somebody expect me the what is your God I. I tell three people, Jongol is a really good God. He is giving me the place, everything. And Jim Beckett is the the dad. He's touched my finger and he showed me the everything, you know. And AJ oh. is my eyes. He showed me everything is the, this good, this bad. The, if it, these three people not in the United States, I think I'm not live that long too. Maybe I go back. Maybe sure. I cannot live over here. But these three people even... Pandemic time, I, I have a COVID, I stay home. They send me three times my house food, the whole car Aww. full, full. That's so sweet. Jungle, Jim Beckett, AJ. If they doesn't send my house food, and I'm dying, right? Nobody right. feed me. <sighs> That's and so nice. I love that. What a heartwarming story. Yeah. Look at you, Jim. You've been pretending to be funny just and, and not secretly sweet. Nobody call, right? The employer. Mm -hmm. Hey, how are you every day? Jim call me every day. Even Jim tell me I have a positive result and my husband did not take the hospital. He said, mm -hmm. okay, you come. I want to pick up for you. He, he doesn't looking for the oh, COVID people, same car sitting. He doesn't looking. And AJ, every week he drop food for my house. That's amazing. And Jungle sent food too. Oh. I that's, love that. That's the big family. Yeah. I, I'm only one person over here. Nobody in my family. But I feel it's everybody over here, my big family. Oh, well, I'm glad to be a part of the family now, too. So yeah. I, uh, well, now I'll have to send you food. Uncle Mark. So, uncle, yeah, Uncle, uncle Mark. Mark. Exactly. <laughs> I always did want to be a cool uncle. That's why I don't have kids. So, well, Sarah, thank you so much for t taking time today with me. Seriously, I really appreciate it. And I hope that you're, you have safe travels back home. Sarah, thanks for your time. I really appreciate that. I think I just said that in the wrap-up of the interview, but it doesn't matter. I'll thank you twice. And Jim, appreciate you coming down to uh, help navigate the uh, interview as well. Now, moving on, I want to talk about some uh, health-related things here. So a while back, I, I started working with a personal trainer, and I really liked these people. They had a cool approach to things, and I wanted to, I wanted to do some fun stuff. I wanted to learn some ways that we could share a few, like, you know, kind of like fitnessy things. We have a weird store. I don't think it'd be out of the question to see people power walking in jungle gyms. I don't think it'd be out of the question to see somebody maybe even power lifting in jungle gyms. Honestly, I'm now I'm kind of curious to see that. I'm going to bring in a bunch of weights. But I uh, reached out to my next guest here, guest here, and I was like, Matt, you got to come on. You got to talk about this. Let's give some health tips. Let's talk about some stuff that we have in the store that pertain to our health. And, you know, everybody's like hot on that for the first few weeks of January until we go back to our old habits. 
But I'm hoping that if you follow Matt's uh, behaviors here and his uh, routine and the way that it's a lot of uh, consistency, be consistent, you know, and you follow those techniques, you might find yourself overall gaining a little health every day. Just, you know, move the needle a little bit. But I thought this was a fun interview and I wanted to share with you Matt Casey from Trilogy Fitness Systems. Inside the WJJI studio with me right now. It's official, Matt. Matt Casey of Trilogy Fitness Systems. Hi, Matt. Hey, Mark. How are you, man? I'm doing great, dude. Thanks for coming out and doing this. I really dude, appreciate thank this. thank you. I'm sure I probably mentioned it in the uh, preamble, but uh, if not, just in case, you know, uh, you've been training me for a few months now. Now, I've obviously stopped once I started this new job because schedules Schedule are gets wild. Yeah. But it's fun, and I'm very happy. I hope I'm, someone's listening is like, is he complaining? I'm like, of course not. I mean, I would love to have more free time, of course, but yeah, who wouldn't? That's but, the dream. Yeah, but I, I I mean, just I'll give you a quick testimonial from the jump, dude. Like, I don't think I've ever been more happy with, like, a workout situation than I was every time I come into dude, Thank trilogy. you. You thank guys you. really make it, like, a really nice relaxing environment that's the it's, goal yeah it's like fu- it's actually fun it's not like i'm never worried that like is someone looking at me unless it's in like the hot way <laughs> right <laughs> and you are a sexy mark around right. those parts oh, so we all know that's right no go ahead i, I yeah. forgot i haven't told anyone my secret nickname no the secret so if you see him around the store you have to shout sexy mark because that is the official <laughs> new name of mark borison <laughs> you heard it here folks so tell me a little bit about yourself matt like what mm-hmm. made you into matt king of trilogy fitness systems yeah so i was uh always growing up like a hyper dork so i you know comics cartoons my mom weirdly let me watch like alfred hitchcock movies and i was like 10 that's cool so yeah i got like into all these weird things so naturally the weird kids get picked on a little bit sure so uh in high school i found boxing with a friend of mine put on a little bit of muscle and i was like ooh, this is kind of fun my grandpa had polio and was always jacked, so that always drew me to it. I love pro wrestling, so I was like, I want to become jacked. And that's what kind of brought my love of it. I had a big hand injury, and my left finger doesn't work, if you can see that. It's oh, wow. a little crooked there. So we, uh, that then got me curious, like, why doesn't my hand work anymore? So then I started lifting, got deep dive into that, was going to go to school physical therapy, and I decided, ah, PT is not for me. Let's open up a gym. Yeah. So then I become... A nice little dorky meathead. That's right. Well, and you are incredibly certified. And I know you mm-hmm. guys post about that on the website. So yeah. we'll drop that at the end so people can learn about your accolades. Yeah. But what it's so fun about knowing you and working with you is that I you're obviously confident and knowledgeable in your skills, but you never like rub it in in a bad way. Right. So you're like, I don't know if you know this, but, uh, you know. If anything, I am way too like self-depreciating and everything with it. But I know, know that feeling, dude. Me yeah. too. I'm always like. Yeah, I host a show. It's cool. It's like, yeah, it's going very well. Okay. It's like, you know, yeah, I went to grad school, did all these things. Yeah, it's cool. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. How long has uh, Trilogy been in business? Uh, 2014. Awesome. So yeah. we're doing great. And you made We've it through COVID, which is, that's huge. Yeah, we exploded through it. That's so amazing. It was, Congratulations. It was a it was a good time. Thank you. Yeah, I'd love you. to hear it. Well, one of the reasons I brought you in today was not just to talk about your wonderful facility, which oh, I think you. I think everybody knows I love it officially now, but I thought it would be fun to cover some of our, you know, we actually have a pretty extensive fitness system, yeah. excuse me, section rather in the store. I thought it'd be fun to cover some of that. And you know what? I'm just going to tease the audience right now because once we're done talking about some of those items, Matt and I found out, and in, it's a ballpark number, but yeah. we did uh, check out to see how many steps you could take in on average, depending on gait and all that fun stuff, if you walk the perimeter of the store. It's a so, very scientific experiment. Yeah, it was incredibly. Yeah, there was a control group. Yeah. Uh, we wore lab coats. It was we did. Great. So. <laughs> 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 so let's talk about the store. I know you're a protein guy. Let's let's start there. Talk to me about what you saw today. Yeah, so we popped around. So our big thing is like, you know, food should be enjoyed and be fun in right. life because who wants to eat nothing but the cliche fitness thing of boiled chicken and steamed broccoli forever, bro. Right. That's not fun. Especially around the holidays now, right? You know, where it's yes. like, and again, another reason I thought now would be a good time to have you in. Yeah. And if you know me, I eat some cookies. Yeah. So we, uh, <laughs> <laughs> just thinking about your baked post and maybe I should tell the audience this, the way we technically met, even though we had mutual friends, but the way we really technically met was when I saw Matt absolutely <laughs> demolish a dumpling eating competition yes. at Amerasia down in Northern Kentucky. Uh, two time reigning champ. Ooh, they have not brought it back yet since then. probably for that I'm reason, possibly yeah. because that reason. they're like, look, you're cutting into our margins. So could you <laughs> stop coming? <laughs> So we were there eating the dumplings and, you know, my fiance, Barbara, the tiger mom inside of her came out and she goes, 
when they when we found out it was a competition, she goes, "You better win this," because she <laughs> knows how much I eat. So <laughs> we were like, "Okay." So we're I think it was forty nine. Yeah, the I remember being. I remember upper forties. I actually thought you broke into the fifties. To be totally honest, I was with you. gunning for it. Yeah, and we asked her like, "Oh, who's winning? Who's winning?" She says, "I can't tell you." And she says, "Well, what's the best one you've done so? Like, what's the record so far?" She yeah. says, 23 or something like that." She says, "Where are you?" I said, "I'm at forty six right now." She says, "Oh, you're good. You can stop eating." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're like no, I'm setting that high score. That's amazing. And I'm sorry to derail you on the no, discussion about the eating better, but no, please. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we popped around, we looked at all the protein sources, like all the fruits and vegetables. That's the coolest part. So we, this is our kind of excursion grocery store. Yeah. So we came out here just to get all of the fun stuff. Yeah. So I picked up a uh, kangaroo. So I'm going to make some kangaroo burgers this weekend. What'd you find out about kangaroo today? Super lean. Yeah. Which is, if you know anything about protein, you want to get some nice lean sources. So kangaroo figured it's going to be kind of probably tasting a little gamey. So should make some unique burgers with it. I'm really curious to hear what you think about it. When I tried kangaroo, it had like a kind of a spice to it. It was a little less in my experience. What I had tasted was a little less gamey, a little more, yeah, almost spicy. Okay. It's like a sausage vibe. That, I don't know how to describe it really besides that. Sounds that sounds good. I'm trying to gain the vocabulary to describe food. Right. Video, but. Yeah. No, I loved hearing that you guys were also doing like exotic produce and things of mm-hmm. that nature too to yeah. implement the diet. You always eat very cool. Yeah. Yeah. And that's people, I think people are too restrictive with what they eat. Mm-hmm. So coming to place like this, it's so fun because you get to see like, oh my God, there's, what is a dragon? What's a star fruit? Like you, so many people just don't know what these things are. Yeah. So buy some, you know, worst case scenario, you have a piece of fruit that you don't love. Best case scenario, you have a new favorite fruit or a new favorite vegetable, right? Absolutely. And that what's healthier than that? It's like way better to go ahead and try that than it is what I often do, which is what international flavor of potato chips are in (laughs) (laughs) I'm like exotic, but not in the proper way. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, in addition to obviously all of the interesting pro- protein options, I almost said produce, but I mean that as well, but protein options, we have a pretty extensive like supplement and like powdered proteins and things of that nature. W- would you say that we cut the mustard as it were there? Oh, absolutely. Like those are those things where the supplement should be exactly like a supplement to a well-rounded balanced out diet, mm-hmm. but those plenty of protein powders, like it's, that's wonderful for smoothies, right? Mm-hmm. In the morning, a smoothie, those scoop protein powder, some yogurt, some fruits, some vegetables, well, it's together and it's delicious. So you get plenty of good protein powders. There's Beverly over there. There's Optimum Nutrition. That's when I take just because it's a little cheaper. Okay. Um, and then you have plenty of multivitamins, which, again, a good supplement if you're getting plenty of fruits and vegetables. You don't really need the multivitamin, but it is a good little supplement to add into it. Awesome. Fish oils. People are trying to put on a little bit of muscle and are working out. There's creatine over there, which... And a, creatine seems to be like a scary word. You always say, oh, is, are, is creatine steroids? Like, what is it? Right. It's a naturally occurring in the body. It's what our bodies use for fuel when we're doing something kind of fast acting. So okay. if you jump, if you run, if you pick up a barbell, like that's all using creatine to produce that action. Awesome. So, yeah. So it's the most research supplement there is. And you can buy like, a, I think it was a four and a half pound tub for 25 bucks. That's incredible. Yeah. It's going to last you half the year. So here's a question I actually had while we were out there and I didn't want to ask till we're in the booth. What's up with pre-workout? That's the one I'm scared of way more than anything yeah. else out there. I mean, create like you said, it's naturally occurring, all that stuff. What's the deal with pre-workout? So pre-workout, people are typically sleep deprived. Okay. Right. We are overstressed people. We're sleep deprived kind of across the board. Mm-hmm. So people just want that jolt to work out. So typically the, the pre-workouts are going to be kind of a combination of creatine, caffeine, and then a couple other, um, I'm blanking on the name of them right now. Mm-hmm. There's just a couple of little supplement vitamins in there that kind of give you that tingly feeling if you've ever sure. taken it, the skin tingles, the yeah, heart. Like niacin, for niacin. example. Niacin, thank you. Is that, that, it? Is. that is actually it, yes. You're welcome. You are I'm also man. professional. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag sexy Mark. <laughs> sexy Mark coming through in the clutch. <laughs> but yeah, those things are like, it just, it gets you going for a workout. That. The downfall of some of those, they're not always like the FDA doesn't track supplement stuff, which is why those are the things where you use a supplement, stick to the things that are kind of tried and true, the protein powders, the creatines. There's, we walked by that one aisle has all those coffees and everything. Yeah. Drink a cup of coffee, eat a piece of fruit before you work out. It's going to do the same thing. Yeah. You're going to have some carbs for that, for energy to make it through. You're going to have the caffeine boost mm-hmm. and you probably get a better tasting 
healthier for you, caffeine? That's an, that's a great point because I'm always afraid that, yeah, I mean, because of the issues with regulation on some of those products, I'd imagine that it's that thing where it's like, well, yeah. I mean, again, use it sparingly maybe is another option, yes. which I think is a nice, actually, that might be a good segue too, because I feel like uh, sparing use of things kind of ties into a lot of your methodology in mm-hmm. regards to the diet end of things, which is, yeah. you know. Eat the fun stuff, just don't eat it all the time. Like, there's plenty, like, li- there's a graders right across this wall. I'll probably get a scoop of my way out of here because <laughs> ice cream. <laughs> right, and they're, yeah, they have great in the name. <laughs> yes, exactly. You can't not grab it, right? <laughs> What would you recommend for a lot of us that are office locked to Mm -hmm. keep, you know, because something I I always see, be consistent. That's a Mm -hmm. a big part of your branding. What is something you'd recommend for someone like me who might be in a studio eight hours a day and doesn't have the option really to, you know, throw weights around? Although I do work in a place that I think if I brought a weight set up in here, they'd probably be like, that's cool. They'd be pretty chill with it. But most offices, I would assume, are not cool about that kind of thing. So what would be some things you might recommend to keep people active? Because I think that's probably going to be one of the biggest parts of this whole nutrition game, right? Yes. Yeah. The biggest thing, planning ahead. Mm -hmm. So bringing a lunch in. Here, it's right. you're in the grocery store. You have access to anything you need. Right. So access to a good lunch, that's going to help you plan. You should plan those things out. So you have them ready for you. But for activity breaks, a few walks here and there. Mm-hmm. Get up, take a 10-minute walk break every hour, right? Go to the bathroom, grab a drink of water, and just get up and move a little bit. People are just, we just lock down in these chairs and never move. Right. And I think that there's a lot of, like, kind of psychologically damning things, too, where we you, – you spoke to a few of these already. A, generally speaking, we're, like, a little – under underslept as it were. Yeah. Sometimes I would say some people are overworked. And I don't want to say everybody. I'm I'm feeling very good lately. Um, but the idea is that I think by the end of the day, you're thinking like, oh, I gotta go work out for an hour straight now. Oh, that's like a whole hour. Do I even have that kind of time? But I th- and the reason I wanted to ask you that is I it, something I love so much about your methodology is that it's like if you are consistently moving multiple times throughout the day, 10 minutes here and there, that's nothing. And if you do that six times, you've done that for an hour. Exactly. You know, it's not like you're advocating for like, all right, go push a car up a hill for, you know, I mean, maybe eventually, but yeah. And those are those things where people overcomplicate it. They want to do too much. Like I think people don't realize how little you actually have to do. When you look at the research of, you know, people, you want to get 150 minutes a week of moderate to vigorous exercise for kind of these metabolic benefits yeah. to protect your heart and to build a little bit of muscle and everything. Moderate to vigorous in a scientific study is not actually all that moderate. It's not all that vigorous. What we would think of it as right. All we see is the stuff on commercials and TVs of, you know, right. an hour in this and crush the gym and here's the new bike and the new thing. But are you suggesting that the media may occasionally blow things out of proportion? What? <laughs> Sensationalism sells. Yeah, no. It's crazy how that works. Anyway, you have a bronze god's body, Mark. You know, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, break it down. Be simple. Be consistent with some food intake. Be consistent with some movement. And people make more progress doing that than they will, you know, trying to kill themselves for an hour and then not doing anything for a week. And then killing themselves for an hour, not doing anything for a week. Sure, and that, it makes so much sense. So. That then brings me back to the top of the interview here, which is you and I just walked the perimeter of the store, right? We yes. walked inside the store. So this is like foot traffic. It may be something good for both you listeners who come in because, you know, people come in and spend a long time in the store anyway. Yeah. And then for those of us employees who want to take those 10 minute breaks or, you know, when available, I think this is great news. So we went and walked the perimeter of the store. There's a, obviously a little give and take because we had some customers, some areas we couldn't access directly. But I think we found out something kind of cool, and I'll let them tell you. What, what did what did we find? How many steps did it, you were off? You were really close. I was very close. I was off by a, about a hundred steps. I didn't or, even think you were that far. I thought you said twelve eighty. I think you were off by like fifty. Oh, it was that's impressive. Thirteen forty three. Yes, that sounds right. I think I screenshotted it. Yes, as a matter yeah. of fact, one thousand three hundred forty three steps. That's just if you take a lap around the building. Yeah. And is there like a good average that you should aim for every day? Would you say eight thousand steps a day? So is literally. A great- goal yeah and we did what would that be like a little less than a quarter of that yeah you know what i mean and we didn't even zigzag no i mean that, that's just doing a circle around it right so imagine how many how much area we ignored you know yeah. I mean, i'm sure we could call phil in and get the math on that because right. he knows the square footage exactly but real talk i mean and that took us maybe 10 minutes to do yeah so i mean if you did that a few times a day 
you're hitting that goal, no problem. And exactly. that's every day. And again, it's building that consistency. Exactly. Which is so important. That's why I like walk, having my bathroom so far away. I'm like, I'm going to lose weight purely on how much water Just I drink and, you know, going to the restroom. Taking the trek across. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I sail across the seas of cheese over the de- over New Delhi. Do as I I'm need calling salami it. right now? Uh. Yeah. I'm like, I do love the Volpe family. I'm going to wait this time though. So <laughs> I did try some of that rose salami. Was it tasty? There. Oh man, it is so good. It's on special right now too. So I, it, well, I might when this swing airs, back out and get some more of it that. It might then. not be on special anymore. So I always, I always feel bad. I'm like, just in case it might not still be on discount folks, but there's that they have a deep discount currently on their fennel salami too which is i like fennel i don't know if i like it enough but the rosé chef's really? kiss for real yeah that salami is one of those dangerous things that anytime my fiance or myself bring it home she does 90 percent of the grocery 99.9 of the grocery shopping yeah we uh it we fly through it yeah. just Stand High sodium. Dinner. I'm trying to get away from it too, and it's so delicious. Oh you know? yeah, this is what killed James Gandolfini. <laughs> <Right>. You know, <laughs> he had it, it's seven years of gabagool. You know, I just thought I could tell you beat me to the gabagool. I was hoping to be able to do it with my hands out there. <laughs> It's an Italian uh, gym that you run now, yes. too. So it's a sandwich shop slash uh, fitness facility. What up, Matt? I thought that was great, man. Um, so, Matt, as always, thank you for coming in and sharing your knowledge. I appreciate thank it. I would you. love to come back. I think it'd be fun if we did, like, a fitness tour sometime like that. Yeah. I think people would be down. And especially with it being the winter, at least winter is coming right now. It's a good way to get those steps in because it's cold steps. outside. I'm, yeah. an, I'm an outdoor exerciser really more than anything. I really love walking outside. Uh, and then, of course, for a portion of the year, you either A, get looked at funny because you're yes. the shorts guy and I never want to be him anymore, at least in that sense. Right. right. Um, or you come inside to a place and why not? And then you can shop while you're done. It's two birds, one stone. Exactly. Uh, yep. Where should people follow you and Trilogy? Where would you like to send them? Yeah. Uh, Instagram, we do, we're pretty active on Instagram, Trilogy Fitness Systems. Uh, it's, that's pretty much all fitness content. If you want to follow me and my three-legged dog, Lily, uh, that's adorable. just Matt Casey, uh, M-A-T-T-K-A-S-E-E. Awesome. And uh, the website? Uh, TrilogyFitnessSystems.com. Beautiful. You know, we got through this whole interview, and I'm just going to leave on this so people want more. Do you know that they have a, uh, a puppet co-worker at Trilogy? <laughs> He's French. Ooh, Francois, huge fan. Francois see? LaBeouf. <laughs> see, and you know now that you, Trilogy's even gone international with this. Exactly. So. We are recruiting the highest level of talent from Marseille, France. Flew all the way over here to move to Cincinnati just to work with us. That's amazing. I love hearing that. It's, it's I love impressive. Francois. Well, right. we'll bring we'll have Francois on the show. Oh, he would love too. to come out I here. bet he would. Well, thanks again, Matt. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Buddy. Thank you, man. Matt, it's been a pleasure as always, my friend. Thank you so much for coming in. You know, I'm sort of surprised we didn't go full on with the lightsaber duels while you were here. But you know what? That just means we'll have to do something in the future with that. Sound good? I'm sure you're fine with it. (laughs) So my last one here, I thought this was fun. You know, you like to follow people who are making waves, right? It's one of the things Jungle Gyms does. You know, we make waves. We we do things different. Uh, A a little uh, to the rhythm of our own drummer. Uh, which is really weird because we don't actually have a drummer here right now. I'm, I'm working on that. You know, I've had my first musical guest on last week's episode. There's a uh, chance for you to download last week's episode. You know, you can pause this one, download it, listen to it, then come back, and I'll still be here talking about it. But I had a chance encounter with one of my favorite people I've met recently, and it's a weird thing to say because most people I don't think have this good of a relationship with this particular type of uh, doctor. But my dentist came in, and he's a big Jungle Gyms fan, and I joke all the time, and I think I make the joke in the interview, too, that he's like Cincinnati celebrity dentist. I think I might be his least famous client. All right, actually, I'll take that back. I think my mom technically is his least famous client now. But you get the point. But uh, Troy's awesome, and what he's done is build something unique in the dentistry game. But I also asked him to come out and give us some nice tips for your teeth and maybe to debunk a few rumors. Because where else but Jungle Gyms are you going to learn all kinds of... And look, I don't want to just talk about the ins and outs of our store. I'm going to expose the world of everything. Anyone that will come and talk to me about this stuff. It's going to be fun. We're going to learn all kinds of things in the future, okay? And I want to know what you want to hear, so make sure you start sending me those emails at podcast at Jungle Gyms. But in the meantime, I want you to meet Dr. Troy Pierce. Well, in another fun turn of events and a little what brings you action here at the jungle, I happen to run into someone I've, I feel like we've bonded pretty well and bonded. <laughs> uh, see, I'm also doing dental <laughs> references uh, in the short time I've known you, but this is Dr. Troy Pierce. Good afternoon, Mark. 
I'm um, so excited to be here. I'd like to thank you for this winning smile I have. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're, we have something in common, and we know how to make people smile. <laughs> and I love watching you make people smile because it's so infect, infectious. It's just infectious. I, I love it. it. You do a great job, and I've just been following you. And this uh, match with you and Jungle Gems is a match made in heaven, I say. Right. You all are going to just um, make each other that much better. I can tell. It's going to really be great. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's an honor to honestly be a part of, like, I mean, this is like a legendary company oh. to be a part of. Oh. I, I mean, remember when I told you, were like yeah. a, one of the only people I leaked this to. Oh, it was so exciting. Which is funny. And I think that speaks to a lot of, about who you are as a person, especially since, you know, I well, mean. thank you. I've mostly just known you with your well, you're hands a little, in my mouth. You're a little vulnerable in the dental chair, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're like, whatever I got to do to get out of here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just let me know. Okay? It's like he just keeps hitting, t- turning the nitrous up a little bit. <laughs> the What's drill's good? firing well, up. We ran out. I think you, I think you, yeah, the tanks went I dry. I tapped it day. out. Yeah, exactly. I was, I think. Uh, the only person in existence who's ever laughed during a root canal. I, but. you know, um, it's it's all made up more than what it's what it really is, right? Oh, it's, for it's, sure, it's all hype. I all bark, uh, no bite. I finally remembered what I think you asked me. You're like, what were you even listening to? <laughs> uh, and I remembered after the fact. It was like shortly after the fact because I was you know so loopy, yeah. but it was uh, an episode of Mark Maron's podcast. He uh, had yeah. this bassist Thundercat that I love on there, uh-huh. and uh-huh. they were talking about. I think they were talking about Star Wars, to be honest with you. Oh. It was like something along. It was definitely nerd culture themed. You should have And he told said me. something silly. I know, right? <laughs> exactly. But I, well, now I know that we're fellow Star Wars people. Right. You know, and so. yeah, I do get to use lasers in my office. So um, that's the closest thing I say that I have to a lightsaber. <laughs> and you have a lightsaber, a real one right behind me here. Isn't I saw it amazing? It's in a glass case. It's, it's, it must be real because it's $300 or something. <laughs> <laughs> it will cut you if you're not careful I with will it. cut you. <laughs> well, so what brings you into the store today, Troy? Well... For one, um, I love the culture and the energy in here. And I drove 45 minutes from Northern Kentucky over here. There's one closer, but you don't have a podcast booth there. (laughs) And I don't mind to drive because it's a little time to decompress on a day where I just, this is my kind of off day. I call it admin day. And um, I got to do some work in the office here a little bit this morning with some new equipment being delivered. But mainly I was just telling everybody, I'm going to go up to Jungle Gyms and be on a podcast today. So <laughs> I am in a great mood. I'm feeling good. I have had like two cups of coffee today. That's more than I, I usually never finish my first one. So I'm good. <laughs> I'm set. I went by the produce. I went by the meat section. The, oh, oh my gosh. gosh. The, de- the seafood. I'm blown away. Like Whoever is doing the accounting around here is must be incredible. <laughs> <laughs> How can you have this? Much? That's They'll what people, be on next, right? <laughs> when people, when I built my office, um, nobody had seen an eight thousand square foot dental clinic, and all these people running around like thirty employees and five doctors. And I'm like, what are you thinking? I'm like, I don't know. I don't have any room for anybody, so I just had to group, build it bigger. And here you are up here. This this place is so unique. I love I, when someone's doing it differently. I want to know what's going on. Sure. And li- your podcast has kind of dives into the culture a little bit more the um owner operator uh jungle jim i didn't know his name was jungle yeah I, oh you imagine my shock the what? first time i came in for an interview <laughs> they're like we're going up to meet jungle i was like jungle okay, ah, okay. if i was going to change my name to something with teeth i don't, I don't know I, I probably won't do that we'll work on it we'll, oh, yeah <laughs> we'll take some r&d on that but um and then all the uh the managers that are around here and uh, heading up the different departments and you just realize oh my gosh these people have been here uh, half their lives. Yeah. <laughs> so um, that says something behind the, uh, the the head honcho. Yeah. The culture that's present here is just, in, you know, I, they brought you in. I thought I, this is going to be a really good move. So I don't think I saw, like, I don't even think my mom was as excited when mm-hmm. she found out about the job. No. As you were. Oh, I, I mean, it. we definitely had that fun moment. It. We were like, this is going to be gonna so rock. much fun. Yeah. No, it's fun. I love marketing. I love the um, to learn about business. That's kind of something new I'm kind of diving into a little bit. It's just, you know, business operations and things and how, you know, how something, when I go into a restaurant, I'm always like, how is this, what's going on here? Yeah. I'm just obsessed with it right now. So. Well, I love it. And I think that one of the reasons I thought you'd be fun to talk to about this is that, again, and you'll find this as you're listening to the show, it's sort of a trend is that I am interested in people who are doing it differently. Right. Right. And that was my first take, you know, I mean, I'd been going to the same dentist for Mm -hmm. 
all, pretty much as long mm-hmm. as I lived in Cincinnati. Mm-hmm. And then when I got referred your way, I was like, mm-hmm. oh, I got to check this place out. Yeah. And yeah, it was like this big, expansive place. They're Different. super high end. T- like, it mm-hmm. was like a cool tech place. I felt mm-hmm. like I was like in the Apple Store meets right. health. There you know you what go. I mean? For lack of a better term, you, you, you know, go. you've got like your staff was awesome. And you and the I people. had a conversation once. And I love that you brought up the culture here too, because I'm, again, I'm genuinely having a great experience working with the company. I can tell. But I think that you did a great job with that as well mm-hmm. because I think that I said to you is that I've never been to a dentist office or any medical facility right. where everyone was genuinely happy. Mm-hmm. How did you pull that off? Oh, you know, I think um, that is a really good question and it has not always been so where we are now this we you know we've been downtown a long time Mm -hmm. i'm a third generation owner of this this practice been around for over 80 years this practice but we moved into a new clinic in 2015 and um, it's really grown into a place that um, you know we we treat a lot of people um, a lot of people who can't you know dentistry is very expensive and we made we made our our mission to make sure that everybody leaves with a plan that they can afford and that they can get the best treatment possible not everybody should Everybody is deserving of having their teeth and their smile and their confidence and being able to chew and be healthy. And that's what we built our practice on. And people are passionate about that vision and that mission. And um, I tell people it's not, it's not okay just to do your job right. You have to do it well with and, and, and interact with your coworkers as if they were your family. And we really pull for each other. Um, I've seen that more now in the past year since well, you know, COVID changed everything. It changed the world around us. It's never going back. And right. I'm okay with that because it taught me a lot about myself, about my team. Um, we had some turnover. We had some leave and we had some come back. And um, it's a different world, but I am so much happier um, now that we have reestablished, you know, our our new normal since right. since this whole thing with COVID. And it really affected healthcare, really affected dentistry. They had what they called the the great recession i'm sorry there was a lot there was a bunch of turnover there yeah. was a bunch of turnover right so um so many people were scared to work in the dental clinic being mouth open spraying up in the air and that's all they're talking about is this um this mist that can go in the air yeah and the spray and the virus is in there and you know what we never had not one transmission in our big clinic i mean nobody has a better sample than what we do right never had a problem and but a lot of people were scared and a lot of people left. And um, so there's been a big turnover in our in our world. Some states have had mandates with vaccines. Uh, fortunately, we have not because I think that would destroy um, uh, certain aspects of healthcare, it's, right. especially in our world. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> we're just lucky to, to, you know, to, to be where we are. And I think, you know, you treat people well. Um, they will return the favor. Yeah. So. It's amazing to think about how, mm-hmm. you know, as, it, as trite as this might sound, just a little bit of decency and kindness goes a long way, especially oh, in the yeah. office. Oh, yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Just, you know, think about it. Just, you just want to, you want you want people to feel comfortable. You want to be yourself. And, uh, you know, in the end, you're making people smile. And that's like, there's the best medicine, right? Yeah. It, it, it So well put. Seriously. What? What made you want to go into dentistry in the first place? Like, what was there some event in life? I'm, I'm from a in small, the tooth and business. I'm a small town guy. Okay. I grew up in Western Kentucky, and you know, it's hard to make a living there. Mm-hmm. Um, the people who uh, were the, some of the most respected were, you know, the, the physicians, the dentists, and my orthodontist just really just took time to know me. And when I expressed a little interest, he kept massaging that every time I came in and. He introduced me to some people at the school and uh, University of Louisville, which I ended up not going there. I went to University of Kentucky, but it's just a, a way to get to network a little bit. And, um, you know, I just felt like I wanted to be a part of a community. I wanted to to make an impact on people. Yeah. And I wanted to be a business owner. Um, my, my best friend's dad um, and his family owned an insurance company, and I just liked the idea of uh, being able to dictate my own future when I mean, my father um, was in an industry in the automotive industry and it was it's, it's cutthroat. And yeah. I, I mean, I just wondered every night if he was going to come home and say, I got to let go. And I did not ever want my kids to feel that I wanted to be able to dictate that. And yeah. so whatever I did, I wanted to be a business owner. And so I wanted, I wanted to do that as quickly as possible. So I did that um, 
in my second year out of school. So it's been the school of hard knocks, but, um, sure. you know, uh, we're, I'm what 15 years from removed from graduation. And, um, I feel like I'm having the best time of my life and what, makes it feel the best I think right now is that my oldest son who's a senior in high school is expressing interest in getting into dentistry so oh, he that's in, fun yeah he was in the you know I see so like actually one of my best friends his, his dad his grandfather's his uncle were all dentists and and he discouraged me my entire life so you do not want to do that it, it, I've heard too much <laughs> you don't want to do it you don't want to do it it's crazy you know who wants to be in somebody's like you know what like it's not for everybody. That's for sure. Right. It's not for everybody, but like so um, many jobs, right. right? I know a lot of people who got into <gasps> it and uh, realized they didn't love it and uh, didn't last long. So, right. but you know, I really enjoy people. I know, I know that about myself. Um, I'm a connector. <laughs> I like to connect people. Absolutely. That's why I like working with the team of doctors. And, um, you know, I think as a team, we're, we're much better than being by ourselves in five different locations. We have five under one roof and we all collaborate yeah. and, we take better care of people because of that. The energy is great for that reason. Everybody comments on the energy. It's so, I mean, and it, it makes so much sense mm -hmm. too. I mean, mm -hmm. and it's hard to really, you know, it, it is palpable in the moment. It's hard to almost express mm -hmm. it. Just it kind of like, takes away some of that tense feeling yeah. of just being at the dentist when it doesn't look like the dentist you're used to. It doesn't <laughs> smell like it. it the no. people aren't this. It's, it's, it's a different, it's a different vibe. It's, people, people it's catch brilliant. it. Mm -hmm. You know, again, I, I, you know, like I said earlier, like one mm -hmm. of those reasons why I thought you'd be a good fit for the show is that yeah. you did it different. Right. You took something right. that was an established norm, right? Just like jungle. Absolutely. And then knocked it on its ear a little right. bit yep. or on its teeth. As I, it were. I love it. I love innovation. Yeah. It's almost got like, I don't know. Everybody's just like cutting up and laughing and then yeah. like, and then professional when they need to be. Right, and you know, as right. someone like me, who's really extroverted and weird mm -hmm. with everyone he meets, it was very nice to not feel like that was the worst decision I made. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, because awesome. most times in life, I'm just like being myself <laughs> yeah, and people yeah. are like, could you stop? <laughs> Turn it down. Yeah. No, just be yourself, man. Yeah. I just love be it. Yourself. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Uh, something I thought would be fun. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe have you uh, drop a few hints on the audience. Yes. What are some, uh, what are some maybe lesser known things that you can do to keep your, you know, mouth health in general? I'm, okay. Pardon me. Expression. Okay. Home, home, rem home remedies. A little. Yeah. Okay. So during COVID, uh, um, during COVID, we learned a lot of course, but one thing that we um, learned was that hydrogen peroxide was effective at lowering the, the, um, uh, load of the viral load in someone who has an infection, even maybe a subclinical infection really? to lower it. So we were doing a pre rinse with, um, hydrogen peroxide, which I learned is very nasty. So, yeah, it but like it has a lot of good things too. So we cut it a little bit with water, probably half and half. And did you know that's what, that's the active ingredient in whitening products. So long-term oh. use of things like hydrogen peroxide, uh, rinses, not only does it help keep your mouth he healthy, it's not something that you want to do every day, like hundred percent strength, five times a day. So, you know, right. you don't want to, you don't want to inject it or anything like that. <laughs> okay. So I'm not saying that. <laughs> I hope the ADA, ADA doesn't catch this. when you are injecting that. <laughs> <laughs> when, in, no, I'm sorry. So, um, but it does have a whitening effect and it's great to use with your, retainers and your Invisalign or your mouth guards and to soak it into 100% straight hydrogen peroxide keeps it clear and translucent. That's one of the things that I've been kind of um, telling people lately. It's something you can easily do at home. You know, yeah. whitening, you can whiten your teeth and everybody asks about whitening. But there, you know, the stuff that you all have here in the store works really well too. It just takes time and right. maybe a little bit of guidance, but you know, sure. that's well, what social media and stuff's for. You can reach out and I have kids ask me all the time, can you whiten your teeth at 12 years old? I'm like, just don't tell your mom. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm always so, you know, you mentioned the whitening. And so maybe yeah. we can just dispel this now, or mm -hmm. maybe we can confirm my fear. But one of the reasons I've never really gotten hard into the mm -hmm. whitening outside of like using toothpaste that might have a little bit yeah. in there or whatever, uh, is that I'm so worried it's going to strip the enamel layer away. Okay. I, yeah. Am I right to feel that way? Nope. It does nothing. You could whiten your teeth till you're blue in the face and it's not going to harm your tooth. It makes your teeth sensitive when you really pump up the level of the ingredients that you're whitening with it mm -hmm. can make your teeth sensitive but it doesn't mean they're sick it's just an irritation that's temporary and it goes away after a day or two oh. but there's some things we can do for that as well oh cool so that is incredible i legitimately yeah. does nothing to yeah harm that's the amazing. teeth at all no Everybody wants whiter teeth. Oh, so yeah. now I like regret not having whitened my teeth for like the last 15 years because I've well, really been paranoid about it yeah. and it, i think this again not to sound like I'm just blown smoke the whole time, but literally I have never felt comfortable enough to really have an actual mm -hmm. conversation with my yeah. previous dentist. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Well, there's um 
you know, there's a lot of ways you can whiten your teeth. Of course, you, you can do it supervised. You can do it rapid pace. Somebody's getting married next week. You can do it like that. Or, yeah. you know, but um, I think there's a, 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 a resurgence of cosmetic dentistry coming about. And sure. um, I've, I've always enjoyed cosmetic dentistry. But there was a time there in my first five years and 10 years in practice, maybe, that, uh, you know, the economy wasn't great. That was a great recession. Yeah. And, um, but now I think uh, with the social media as strong as it is and everybody, you know, on selfie pics and the, yeah. the amount of um, uh, people who doctor their smile for a post would shock you. Like over 60% of smile smiles that you see on Instagram have been doctored and edited and stuff by their, by the people who do it. Yeah. So, well, somebody that did like photo restoration too, and a little Photoshopping and stuff. I remember Mm -hmm. that was always one of the things was like go in there, whiten the teeth a little bit and then the whites of the eyes too. No. Yeah. Yeah. They say your teeth are supposed to be the whiter than your eye, the white of your eyes. But I think we're going white. We're, 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 we're pushing past we're, we're debunking that here lately. <laughs> <laughs> People like white teeth these we're days. We're stepping over lines. Mm, yep. <laughs> well, you know, something else I thought I'd bring up then, too, because you kind of just hinted at this, mm-hmm. but you all have a really impressive social presence, too. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's, um, it's. I would say it's fairly new. About three years, well, actually, it was right, it was 2019. Um, I wanted to just commit to it, mm-hmm. and so I hired a... Um, a person who I wanted full time um, media slash photographer slash marketing to take some off my plate so I could focus on some other areas. And he had more expertise and collaborate more. And he's super into photography. And that's one of the things that's very important to what we do is, is photography. Absolutely. And it's, it's a science, right? So um, he's, we've really learned a lot from each other. He's full time. And uh, you know, we, we have a really good Instagram presence. I think uh, we need to work on some of the other channels, but, um, you know, Instagram's kind of where the people are yeah. that I do work on. So, right. um, you know, uh, we have uh, stories every day, like behind the scenes type stuff, and people like it to the office, and they yeah. love it. They love it. They get to see, they get to know you as a, as a person, and people do business with people right. instead of companies. And when I changed the um, name of our Instagram from our practice page to my page, and they knew they were talking to me because they were talking to me anyways. Right. That's when it really started to get traction and when you would have people reach out. And since then, it's been, uh, you know, Cincinnati Bengals, people coming from out of town. Um, that's kind of my sh- my thing. I've been. But I love it. You're <laughs> like the celebrity dentist. You it's, know what I mean? It's, I never I never thought that. I would be in the position I am now, <laughs> but all it takes is one person to gain trust in an organization like that. And, you know, I've, I've really become pretty, pretty close with some of the guys on the team and um, I love sports. We have a connection there and, you know, I, I work with them and, um, you know, get them appointments when it's best for their schedule and things like that. Yeah. And, you know, they're very busy and in and out of town a lot. So um, it's been good to know these guys and get to know this new group that's in. And uh, they have really changed the culture there, too. Um, the Bengals, have, I, love it. I mean, you've worked with Sam Hubbard. I remember right. that. You showing me that. That was really cool. I mean, oh, what a hometown good kid, right? Yeah. Um, gosh, I mean, how we were it's like, like a story of COVID too. I felt really bad right. because I was still cutting up and being a weirdo. Right, and right. I could tell he was just like, if I get sick, it's going to ruin my contract. <laughs> sure. and I'm like, it's fine. Man. Like, I'm getting ready to resign here. So I'm going to get that extension going. <laughs> I'm just like, sip out of my Pepsi can. <laughs> you know what? Did, did we ever make the connection that he got that his extension right after kind of blowing up with you? I mean, I, uh, you know what? I don't want to take full responsibility, but I'll take like 75%. I mean, it's pretty, pretty close yeah. there. I mean, I remember that. So even if he didn't accept my LinkedIn <laughs> request. <laughs> Seriously, how dare him? He's probably not on. I got honest with you, he's probably not on LinkedIn. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's good. He's good. Hometown boy, Mr. Supermodel. I think he's supposed to be on The Bachelor. He, I mean, like seriously. My wife's like, yeah. um, do you know Sam Hubbard? I'm like, yeah, no. <laughs> I, I remember my sister was like the same way. She's like, oh, they picked a really handsome one for right? you. And I was like, yeah, I think they needed somebody to be my exact opposite. Balance me out a little bit. Oh, yeah, he's like a six, seven, you know, yeah. 1% body fat. Okay. Right, exactly. And I was like, yeah. I'm the exact opposite. I'm like, I'm six, seven of body fat. <laughs> oh, no. But hey, I definitely am self conscious when I take pictures with the with the football players. But hey, you know what? 
I'm just gonna be myself. You do you, I'll yeah. do me, and it works out, doesn't it? It works out. Well, for sure. You, yeah. And you know, I think that's why you've seen that success too, because you are really genuine. Your staff's Thanks, really man. genuine. Like you are, are, you bring that, and I think that speaks to why when it changed from the you know the Beck Pierce branding yeah. to yours, yeah, that makes so much sense. People want to connect with people. I think that's again, and, and I always like to tie it back to Jungle a little mm-hmm. bit here, but I kind of think that's why something like Jungle Gyms has become, mm-hmm. you know, what it is, right? Mm-hmm. Is because he's a guy that's in the store. Well, he's not here today while we're taping this, but like he is here 99% of the time. You know I, what I mean? I love, so when I was learning, you know, what, where, what do I want my office to be like one day? I was going around and picking things from little, from one office and something that they were doing well and something that they were doing well and put him together. And I can see that in his vision here. When you hear about him talk, like I feel like I'm walking into animal kingdom. That's the first thing that came to my mind. My first time I was like, <laughs> and he's talking about Disney. I'm like, Oh, I freaking love Disney. Yeah. And then you see like, uh, just the, the characters around and you can see where he's getting some of this stuff and yeah. putting it together just the, the best practices of different, you know, minds coming together and making this his vision. And man, it's just really cool to see a non corporate, non big corporate type place yeah. just doing like insanely well. I've said it a billion Over times decades. on the show. Right. Well, I've said it a billion times on here. Do you think Kroger would hire me? To do this, I only go to the grocery if they have a podcast studio now. <laughs> See, smart choice. I think you made the right decision, you know. And no real shade of Kroger, but you know, it's that. But it's that thing where it's like, this is a guy. He's like, I'm going to do it my way. I like my own mm-hmm. funk. This is what. This is how That's we right. do it. And then look how crazy this room is. Mm. You know, it's passion. Uh, how long passion. do you think I can get away with talking about that before the audience <laughs> is just like, could you shut up about how cool the room looks? I'm like, just watch it on YouTube. This is, the, this is so cool. Yeah, it is really cool. I love isn't the it? studio. Troy, I really appreciate you coming in today. Absolutely. I had a lot of fun. You're a Me great too. guy. I really appreciate it. Thank you for all the support of the show, truly. Oh, I love it. I love it. I'll, yeah. uh, I'll share it with everybody I can. I and, can't uh, wait. You know, it's, it's a great story, and to see you guys coming together like that, it's going to be cool, man. It's so much fun. Glad to be Pretty, here. Thanks for thanks having again. me. Of course, anytime. And- Troy, it's been a pleasure. What a fun episode. I had a lot of good people on this time. This is really exciting. Well, we've got some fun stuff coming up in the next few weeks. We've got some more beer content coming up. I've... Uh, Scheduled some time with Brett from Urban Artifact to talk about the process of brewing wild beer using wild cultures. I'm very interested in the world of sour beers, or as they put it, Midwest fruit tarts. Uh, Because if you go back to our episode with Sin Soy, there's actually a lot of uh, crossover between the way some of the soy brewing is done uh, as as well as in the sour beer game. It's kind of interesting. I I think we actually maybe talked about it a little bit on that episode with Sam from Sin Soy. That was a great episode, too, so you should check that out. I've also got some stuff where I'll be out with with the 50 West team again, and I think I'll be on site as we're working on more of those Road to the Jungle beers that you heard about a couple weeks ago. Because we are doing a full series of those, as we mentioned. I believe there's going to be 12 beers in total, so this will be our second one. You know, and if you didn't go through the first one, the Hazy IPA, that was a great one. And I can't spoil what the next type is, but I'm actually very, very excited for the next beer we're working on there. So that's what we've got coming up in the future. I hope you're enjoying yourselves. Again, thanks for everybody who's listening. Thanks for all the reviews. Shoot me an email. And in the meantime, I'll see you out in the aisles. The Jungle Gyms podcast is recorded in the WJJI studio inside Jungle Gyms International Market in Fairfield, Ohio. The Jungle Gyms podcast is produced and hosted by Mark Borison.